Good evening everyone, welcome to Tom Plays Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord for Absolute Beginners. This is um, a bit different to the games I normally play. They've been quite ambitious with it and in places it can be a bit janky, but I see it as a kind of tactical sandbox for medieval combat. I quite like how they put you on the field of battle. So I just thought it was worth looking at. The strategies are a lot, some of them are more common sense than the kind of things you normally have. And I just think it's worth a look. So there are two ways to start a game. The sandbox puts you on your own. You can set your age and how experienced you are so you can miss some of the grindiness. But if you haven't played before, you should definitely do New Campaign, which um, gives you two brothers and a sister to start with, which is a big advantage. Companions and family members are a huge asset in this game. So let's do that. There's an introduction which sort of sets the scene of a civil war. Planning to skip it. For 500 years, the Calradian Empire dominated the continent. So the Calradian Empire took over long ago, but now it's falling apart. So the lands with this takes place in this civil war is made up of six different cultures and most of the cultures represent a single faction the exception being the empire because they're in civil war there are actually three separate empire factions each culture has its own advantages and disadvantages each favors a particular play style and a particular way of doing combat on a loose level, the um, Vlandians do mostly horseback fighting with lances. The Sturgians and the Batanians tend to do infantry a lot. Uh, the Empire and the Azari are quite mixed, and the Kazates mostly do mounted archery. It doesn't matter a huge amount which you pick, because you can higher armies of any culture but one thing you do need to bear in mind is that if you take a city if you want to start conquering cities it's a lot easier to hold them if you have someone of the appropriate culture so there are more empire cities than any other so if your culture is empire you're gonna have a much easier time in some ways with taking over cities another thing that's surprisingly important is speed. We're probably going to play on easy mode so we have a speed advantage anyway but the Azurai with no speed penalty on desert and the Patanians with 50% less speed penalty in forests can actually be quite good because you will often find situations where speed is really important. So I'm going to go with the Patanians this time I'm probably going to try to play mostly with Britannian troops, so there's going to be a lot of infantry hand-to-hand. -hand. I will have archers and cavalry, but we won't be using them as extensively as I might be. Might change my mind on that, just so we can try out different tactics. Right, so if we go in easy mode, we're going to have someone larger than life. So, someone fairly tall. One of these guys. And the battalions are loosely Celtic. So some nice whirly tattoos is kind of nice. So to set up your character, they have a kind of um, backstory that you set up. And each one affects your attributes and skills. The six attributes are not going to change that much. You will rarely be able to increase them. You, you do get to a bit, but you do need to be quite selective about what you go for. A 
As a general rule of thumb, the top three are your own personal skills. So if you're planning on going it alone, I don't know how that would work, or just having a fairly small group, these would be the ones to focus on. The bottom three are more about leadership, so we're definitely going to be focusing on those. So if our parents are healers, we get intelligence, charm and medicine. I think the main skills we're going to need, although we can increase those without too many issues, are tactics, leadership, charm and steward. So that gets us charm at least. Okay, leadership skills is an obvious one. Cunning, tactics and leadership. So we need to think about weapons a bit as well. Uh, repaired projects, that gives us engineering, smithy and more intelligence. They're, they're useful. Uh, right, so if we were playing this on realistic mode, I would probably be going for a bow. Or a crossbow, but for battalions it would be a bow. This is because, basically, it's very easy to go down in combat. So I'd want to keep me distance, because if you go down, you can't give any more orders during the battle. Which could be disastrous. However, because we're probably going to do this on the easiest mode, I'm going to go off with something more melee. So I was thinking sword and shield, because that way you get a shield. Uh, probably a lance, because we're going to be on a horse, and they only give you four slots for weapons, including the shield. Not really a weapon. Well, you can shield bash with it. So that takes up three, so we don't have room for a bow and arrow. So throwing will be the fourth one for the times when we do want a projectile. So we will try to get stuff in those. So this gives us riding for the horse and the lance. We don't yet have anything in social. So if we do treated people well, it gives us more charm and steward, which is good. That helps us to manage a group. And this bit's quite important. If we do subdue the raider, we get one-handed, which we also want, and athletics, which is good for when we're not on a horse. Okay, so this is an important part of the story. Basically, we were part of a decent-sized family. The Civil War kicked off. There's raiders everywhere. We tried to move somewhere safer. Didn't make it. In was attacked. Our brother and sister have been seized, so we need to get them back. But we and our older brother have survived by subduing the raider. It's worth noting these as well. I think partly because of the backstory we've got some positive traits. These will work well because I'm planning on being a good guy. But they are affected by what you do. But they can also give you some advantages. Okay, so name, you can put your own name in if you want. Or you can just press the dice, the die, and pick a name that you think you can pronounce. So... Cadigan, I think I can pronounce, hopefully. So there are four difficulty settings, free, standard and custom. I normally uh, vary between Bannerlord, which is the realistic one, and Freebooter, which is the easiest one. So the... Um, I do actually like playing them both. They make for very different games. The realistic one you can actually die, so your family becomes far more important. You need to have heirs. Um, your heroes can die. You need to be very careful. The freebooter, this is basically the biggest change, apart from everything being easier, is that no one can die. Your troops can, but you, your family, any companions you pick up cannot be killed. You can still go down in battle, but you won't actually die. And the other thing that's important is the map movement speed, who get a bonus. That really makes a difference. So, yeah, realistic 
Banner Lord is what I play when I'm trying to be properly tactical. Freebooter gives you the opportunity to be a hero. You can be larger than life, you can be head of your troops, storming the battlements, and you will still get away with it. So it's, it's kind of fun, but both are fun in their own way. But we'll definitely start with Freebooter. Brother, it's been three days now we've been tracking those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue our brother and sister? Are we up for a fight? This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush up on our skills. The practice could come in handy when we catch up with the raiders. So in Sandbox, I think you probably start in your own culture. Might have mentioned that. But with new campaign, you always start at this legion training camp. I definitely recommend going through the courses if it's your first time. You only need to really do the ones you're planning to use, so if I was doing it, I'd do the sword and shield on foot and the lance on the horse. But as it is, I'm not going to, partly because I don't want tutorial pop-ups all the way through. Are you sure about that? Alright then, let us split up and look for the little ones separately. I'll send you a word if I find them before you do. One other thing, brother. We want people to take us seriously. We may be leading men into battle soon. Let's give our family a name and a banner, like the nobles do. Okay, here we go. So we've been given some quests. If we select to leave. So they're trying to make up here with the fact that we missed some of the story with not doing the tutorial. Uh, we find this guy, Tacteus, and he gives us a small bronze artifact which is connected to Noretzi's folly. And we need to work out what that's about. So apparently our, our family name is Fen Earache. Probably not pronounced like that, but I'm tempted to make jokes about <laughs> painful ears all the way through. All the Britannian clans are fend something. Right, we also need to select a banner. Uh, Britannians usually have green. I'm gonna go with a bear and make it a bit bigger. So it's more visible, and I'm gonna go white. So I think that stands out nicely. So this is the main map. We can zoom in and out with a mouse wheel. We have a bunch of things we can access down here. Uh, the only ones we really need to worry about are the quests and our character. So character, we've actually gained a level already. It's a little bit more about the skills. Basically, the skills allow us to gain these perks, which are very important. We don't set the skills directly. All we do is set focus points, up to five of them, and they change how quickly we learn them and how far along this tree we can go. So if you look at bow, look at the green bit, we're getting pretty much nowhere with bow. We haven't learned anything yet. We could still learn a bit, but only as far as the green. One-handed, on the other hand, we can more or less get to the second perk, so we can certainly get the first. So the amount of green depends on your attribute and also the number of focus points. So one we didn't manage to put focus points in, which we are going to use a lot, is scouting. You pretty much use this on the map as you're moving around. So you can see that even with the attribute 3, we still don't have enough green to reach the first perk. So I'm definitely putting a focus point into that. And then as theory as we move around the map, we should start increasing this. Okay. The other one is the quests. We've been given two quests to start with. So the first one is establish your clan. So to get to the point where we can rescue our brother and sister, we need to get another thousand dinars, which apparently is a currency. I feel like it should be dinari, because, um, yeah, never mind. Grow your party to 20 men, we currently have one person, and reach clan tier 1. We're currently on clan tier 0, and also hire one companion. 
The other one is investigate Nuretsi's folly. We basically just need to talk to certain nobles. And I'm not a huge fan of this quest, but I think it's worth talking to the nobles just because it gives you an idea of how the world works and how everyone sees each other. And maybe it helps you work out which noble you'd like to join. If you want to join a faction, rather than making your own. Okay, so if we zoom all the way out, we can actually move around by clicking and holding with a left mouse button and dragging the map around. We start off in the Southern Empire's lands, but there's also a Western Empire and a Northern Empire, all in the middle. The only other faction that's in the middle is the Patanians. At this level of zoomed outness, we can only see the cities they control. And you can see the Britannians only have five cities, and they're surrounded by four other factions. So they're not in a great place, but in some ways that can be good, because if someone takes a Britannian city, there's a chance it'll rebel, which will give us an opportunity to conquer it without upsetting anyone. So it's not entirely a bad thing being Britannia, even though they're in a bad situation. So the Vlandians are in red to the west, the Sturgeons to the north, Cusates to the east, and Azorai to the south. So what I'm planning to do is make my way over to Batanian lands, but we're in a very precarious situation with being on our own. So we need to head over to the nearest village. So we've got this one, which apparently specialises in sheep, and is part of the Southern Empire. So in the village, we have three people who might be able to give us quests. At the moment, none of them has one. And there's a few things you can do. Walk through the lands actually allows you to walk around the village. It's quite nice for flavour and realism. But it's not something we really need to do very often. The main things we care about here right now are recruit troops and buy products. Recruit troops, I want to get some of these Imperial recruits. And we need to at least get some grain. Because as we have more troops, they're going to need feeding. If you look at the bottom right, we have some indicators. This is the amount of money we've got. And the expected change is how much we will lose every day. Mostly from paying wages at the moment. So it's very important to make sure this doesn't get to zero. Otherwise, um, people will start deserting then we'll be in a right mess. It's pretty much how you would lose the game, I suppose. Given we can't actually be killed. There's influence, which isn't important at the moment. That's our personal health. Nothing to do with the soldiers. Uh, Battle-ready troops. That's exactly the same thing that shows on the map. But here it tells you the number of wounded troops as well, if you hover over it. Food. Almost as important as money. We've got how much we've got and how much we'll lose every day. You don't want to run out of food either. And this is morale. This is actually quite important. There aren't that many ways we can improve it. The main one is that we could try and get some more varied food. But it affects how well your troops do in battle. If we run out of food altogether or stop paying wages, this is going to go way down. So at this stage we want to avoid any groups bigger than us. There will be other groups wandering around the map, but the only ones that might attack us are the ones in red, like this one. We don't want to go near them right now. Until we have far more troops. We seem to be um, a bit sparse at the moment. A bit more grain. I might get a couple of cheese just to see if it gives a bit of variety and improves morale. Right, well, let's head for a city. So you see, food variety is now minus one instead of minus two. But grain does tend to be the um, standard. You just add other foods to it when you can. If we right click on the map and move, we can change our viewpoints can be quite useful. Left click and move to move around, right click and move to change a view. We want to avoid 
Yeah, we're fine. So city is very much like a village, except we seem to have five people who can give quests. She actually has a quest, but I'd rather not take this one. Uh, Gangney's recruits basically wants us to take prisoners by fighting bandits and looters and get enough of them to bring back to her. I mean, we might be able to do that. But I'd rather leave it for now. Okay, so we've got five recruits. Instead of clicking on them individually, we can just click recruit all. We have a maximum of 22 that we can currently keep. I want 15 of these Imperial troops, and then I want to fill in the rest with Batanians. So let's check where Batania is again. Up there now. Got a little turnaround. The little globe here, if you click on it, it will actually reset the map so that up is north. Which can be very helpful for not getting lost. So now we have a decent number of troops. We're also going to be keeping an eye out for smaller groups of bandits. So that we can attack them and give our troops some experience. There isn't actually very much we can do with them at the moment in terms of tactics. stop at 15 for the Empire troops because I really want to fill in the rest of battalions so yeah the troops effectively come in five tiers maybe six if you include the noble ones but your standard troops are in five tiers so at the moment we've got Imperial recruits which are tier one and they're really not very good Oh, okay. So this is Garios. He is the ruler of, I think, the Western Empire? Forgive me what may seem to be an abundance of caution, but please keep your distance. Just beyond sword length is fine. So, who might you be? He does give us some information about him. He's the ruler of the Western Empire. I guess I'll be polite. You tend to have a neutral, polite, and rude option when you're talking to people. But hey, we may end up working for him one day. So he's one of the free claimants to the Empire throne. So we can ask him about Noretzi's folly. It's what some people call the Great Battle of Pendrake in the year 1077. So this basically just gives us some of the backstory tells us there was a big war between the Empire, the Kazates, and the Azurai, and they were fighting the Sturgeons, Batanians, and Vlandians. And it wasn't fun for anyone. So we can actually ask him about it. So I could read this out. Yes, we will never forget that day, the day we learned that the old men who claimed they had the right to rule us were doddering incompetence. I was with the vanguard. Noretzis apparently knew that the Batanians had planned an ambush. The Kuzate scouts had told him, but he never bothered to inform us. So up we went, along a lovely wooded stream, until the Batanian arrows started whooshing in from all sides. We had our shields, but you can only point them in one direction at once. So we started to drop, one by one, until the Batanian foxmen came screaming out of the trees. The Foxmen are shock troops. They have two-handed swords. So yeah. Ordinarily, they'd be very vulnerable to archers, but, well, old Noretzis hadn't thought to send any along with us. So they came upon us, chopping and slashing, and we fought until we broke. And that's true, actually. They don't have any shields, of course. So, yeah, you do have to be careful with your shock troops that um, archers don't take them down. I run too, and any man who tells you he wouldn't in these circumstances is a liar. When I was sitting in the cold woods late that night, hiding with the other fugitives, listening to the barbarians whoop and holler as they chopped off heads as trophies, I promised them that no Calradian soldier should ever again be led into battle by an emperor who knows so little of war. <laughs> 
So yeah, there's no particular reason to fulfill this quest, but I do think it's kind of useful for setting the scene. So we've got a village here that's specialising in grain. So I'm going to fill up a little bit. Note that there's a limit to how much we can carry. If we go over this, we will be <laughs> very slow. Also, our money's getting a bit low. So also passing a castle. There's not much to do with castles at this stage. They probably won't let us in. And here are some looters. So you can click on them. They can be a bit difficult to click on. But you can tell by the little red arrows. And you'll automatically chase them. Back off, stranger. Unless you want trouble. I don't mind. Looters are the easiest um, enemies to fight. So we've got three options. In fact, start here. It shows the groups involved in the battle. You can have multiple groups in one battle. It also shows an estimate of the power levels. At the moment, because we're completely untrained and they're the weakest enemy you can fight, you're basically just based on numbers. So we almost outnumber them three to one. We've got three options. We can attack, which means we're running the combat. We can send troops, which basically lets the computer work it out itself. Or we can leave. So we're going to attack. And we're going to start with the most basic Under tactic. My command! The one they actually tell you in the tutorial, which is press F1, press F3. Charge! And that tells everyone to charge. Holding a sword at the moment, we can use a mouse wheel forwards to cycle between our two weapons. Or weapon weapons we've got. Mouse wheel the other way can put our shield away and get it out again. Yeah, it looks like we won that one. I will sometimes get involved in them. Uh, you use the basic WASD keys to move around. Obviously with a horse you can't immediately stop. You have to slow down. And you might notice there's a little white arrow pointing upwards. As you move your mouse around, that arrow moves around and that determines where your sword swings. So I'll swing from the right, swing from the left, above and below. If we switch to the lance, you only get above and below. So you're either horizontally or, well in this case, fighting high up. But if we look down a lot, then you could be... Um, striking downwards. If you're charging some of the lights, you always want the arrow pointing up and you can sort of hold the mouse down to couch it and then let go to hit someone. But yeah, controls are pretty much the same on foot and you can get off your horse if by stopping completely looking down on it. But yeah, nice and simple. So you press tab to get out of the screen. We didn't lose anyone and they lost five people and we've taken one prisoner. Some of our troops have also gained experience. So as a tier one troop this allows us to change them to tier two. It costs us money and it also means they're more expensive every day. But we're the reason we got these guys is because, well, partly we needed some troops and we were in the Empire, but the Empire alone of all the factions has tier 2 archers. So I'm planning on using these guys as our archers until we can get battalion archers, which would be tier 3. So we're not going to make any infantrymen, we're just going to turn all of these into archers. But our expected change has gone up now. Uh, we've also got some loot, so we can pick it up like this, or we can just do everything. At the start of the game, you will usually loot everything. So we're click quickly checking to see if any of the gear we've got is better than what we currently have. So the one thing is that we don't currently have any head armor at all. So we'll equip that. Then we're done. Okay. So yeah, there was nothing particularly tactical about that one. 
you need 20 troops to be able to divide into different groups and of course on tier one there isn't much she can do anyway okay so this guy has an actual quest which i suppose we could attempt um i do want one more imperial recruit i hadn't realized um obviously it counts us as one of the troops so to have 15 i need to have 16 in total and we do need to make some money actually so let's see what he has to say Oi, sorry, I don't think I know you. I'll just go for neutral because he's not been that polite either. Okay. The stuff he says here, I don't think it means very much. Heard you need some help. So his daughter has been bewitched by a ne'er do well. So what's wrong with this guy? Yeah, apparently he's a terrible, terrible man. Not sure I believe it, but let's give it a go. Okay, so we're going to try and find her. I'm not sure we've, we're sending our best tracker necessarily. I think we're going to have to search for nearby villages. And we've also got a group of 12 looters here. Surely we can manage them now we've got some archers. As long as they don't get too close to those 18 looters. We're not looking for a fight. Well, I am. So I'm going to do a slight alternative to Help the me! charge. Oh! Actually, let's do a big alternative. So we actually happen to be stood on a slope here. Which is brilliant. Because... Our archers are slightly higher up. So instead of telling them to charge this time, I'm going to tell them to engage, which should mean the archers keep the distance. But in theory, they might start fighting anyway. F1, F1. Move to enemy! Engage. You do tend to want your archers higher up because they can shoot over the heads of your infantry. I'm honestly not helping very much. At least I can ride me uh, men into the horses or something. Yep, that didn't work out too well. Sure, what the archers thought they were doing there, they seem to have kind of run away. Might have been better off making the archers stand still on reflection. The problem is, we couldn't give different uh, orders to each group at the moment. We need to get above 20 men. The looters do have the ability to throw rocks, I think. Not very effective. But yeah, so basically, this is engage, and people with ranged abilities will try and keep a distance. Whereas with charge, I think they'd be a bit more willing to um, stay put and get to grips. The archers will have swords. But they are actually doing a pretty good job of taking these guys down. It may not look like this, but the game's actually quite forgiving about aiming a lot. I'm just really, really bad. <laughs> well, there you go. Archers, undefeatable. <laughs> At this level. Right, so we actually lost our eight recruits there.
else to take these, but we might actually have some. Yeah, we do. R fine rugged gamberson is much better. What we have, legendary wrap shoes are better than our forester boots. Wrapped head cloth is better than the ripped pilgrim hood. So another thing worth mentioning, so far we're just looking at the battle outfit. There is actually a civilian outfit which we should also try to keep up. You can end up wearing these during jailbreaks. And maybe some other scenarios. So it's worth just trying to keep it up to scratch as well. But the main thing is the battle outfit. Okay, so that battle did not go well. And it looks like this group of 18 is uh, taking an unhealthy interest in us. Okay, I don't actually want to get these Vigla recruits. They're good, but they are infantry. And for a tier 2 troop, they're quite handy if you want horsemen, but we can get horsemen from Britannia. I don't think our mission is here. Oh, we've actually got... Completely failed to notice. It's put a marker on a town. So if we've evaded that group of raiders, let's just go straight to the town. In forests, we should be extremely fast. So we shouldn't have too many problems evading enemies. But yeah, I just want to go for Imperial recruits at the moment. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I want two, three, four, five, six, seven. That gets us back up to scratch. So let's take a walk through the lands and see how the villages look. So you don't often have a reason to do this, but it is nice all the work they've put in to making the villages look good. So when you're looking for something, or someone, if you hold down the ALT key, you can see all the important people around the village. So we're going to be looking for one with little blue arrows around it. Shouldn't really be riding across people's crops. Let's try and stick to the roads. So these are the people who give quests, so you can come into the village to see them. I expect our quarry to actually be outside the village. I'm kind of surprised I can't see them. Yeah, that's another way to leave, as well as holding down the tab key, we can leave the area. It's how you would flee from a battle. Yep, I am deeply confused. because of a sort of quest this is, I'm expected to just look around for them. Didn't think I was. Yeah, do you have the map again? Are 
usually they would be marked out. There's one of these guys with lots of blue arrows. I don't think I can ask people where they are. I think they only tell us where the head people are. Someone can't be trusted, which is great, but not really very useful information for us. Okay, let's try over here. Oh, right into a fence. for a wagon or something. I'm sure it's usually much easier than this. Seriously, starting to question if I've got the wrong village. It certainly said that we had the right village, though. Let's try just skipping out and coming back in. Maybe something's got confused. change? Maybe follow the road? Normally expect them to be somewhere outside the outskirts of town. Probably getting ready to leave. like here maybe. Not seeing them though. More peasants. 
And I've ridden into a cart. Awesome. to be the lucrative um, endeavour that I was hoping it would be. I suppose I can ask you, can I? Hey, so who are you then? Nope. No way to ask him. I'm going to have to give up to this one. Absolutely insist that they're here, but when you actually go in, they aren't. I wonder if this is uh, part of the whole jankiness thing I mentioned. Absolutely nobody else. It's not back the way I came, is it? No. They just absolutely do not appear to be here. Right, fine. Well, I've had that quest work fine before. But, um, not this time. I'm going to have to make money another way. So let's leave that, and we're going to try to head into Batanian lands. Don't have very far to go at this stage. And I think this village here is Batanian. Stop the speed of it. So, recruit troops. Ah! <laughs> and instantly we can actually get um, Batanian archers, right? So t they are tier 2, but they're noble, so you can't always get them. The. Um, oh, we can't afford anyone. Wow, that's bad. That's really bad. We really need to get to a city and um, sell some things. It doesn't help when people give us quests and don't have a solution. Okay, are there any quests here? Army of Poachers might be a good one, actually. And Special Weapon Order. Okay, well, let's first let's go to the Tavern District, because we can ransom our prisoners. We also have someone we could talk to, but we'll save that for next time. And trade. We want to trade in all the weapons and armour that we haven't used. a bit better and let's fill up with Britannian troops and then let's check out these poachers okay peace to you stranger what is your name yeah nice and polite okay need some help with a problem so he hired some hunters to get hides for his tannery and now he wants rid of them so I didn't mention this, when you do quests, you can actually get a companion to do them. We don't have any companions yet, that chap we can talk to could become one. Or we can just say we don't want to do it, but we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to head off. 
head down to Bryn Glass and just wait for them. We may not have to fight, we will find out. So you can fight, but the village would rather you didn't. So we're going to try to negotiate at least. So here's our poacher. So maybe we can come to an agreement. So then we have to try and persuade him. So those attributes we had for being a good person are actually helping us here. Our best option is still this. Sure, depends on our charm. We've been successful there. But we do have to succeed with another one. So I'll go with this one. Right, now that's a critical fail. So if we'd failed, we could have tried one of the others. But a critical fail means we don't have a choice. So we're just going to have to hope they're not too dangerous. Hear me! Okay, so now we've got more than 20 people. We are able to form into different groups. So they've actually done it for us. They've given us three groups, one for infantry, one for archers, and one for cavalry. I shouldn't say infantry, should I? Um, melee, I suppose. Foot melee, um, foot archers, mounted melee. We don't actually have any mounted archers yet. Those are the four basic types. Okay, where are our actual troops? Oh, there they are. Right. So, given this could be a little dangerous, is this a hill? It does rather look like a hill. Right, so what we can do, these groups are represented by the numbers. So, archers are number two. So, if I press the number two. Archers! Then press number one and put the infantry in front of them. And I'll press number three. And we'll see where that gets us. So this is very basic layout. The archers are on the hill. The infantry are forming a wall in front of them. Not entirely sure where the poachers are going to come from. I'm just going to leave everyone to stay put. The power levels have things slightly in our favour, but we will see. Not entirely happy that we don't have a very good viewing angle. Like if I knew they were coming down this slope, we could actually block it off and have the archers attack them as they come down. But they may yet come from a different direction. I'm fairly sure they'll come from broadly in front of us, at least. Okay, well, someone's shooting, and I don't think it's us. I'm curious as to why our archers aren't shooting yet. Manage to do much damage at least. Oh, right, so if you press 1 and charge. Oh, hang on, that's not right. Uh, F9 for return, F1 and F3 for charge. So I'll be infantry charge. I'll leave the archers where they are because they've got a good vantage point.
completely ineffectual in combat as usual. But we've won. It's not so bad, we lost two of our Imperial recruits. But we did win. We got three prisoners. Imperial recruits into archers. Right, Battalion of Volunteers. I've got two options for Tier 2. Clan Warrior will turn them into our basic Battalion Warriors. They'll generally have a pike, they'll have a shield. All around good options. Woodrunner can then go on to become either the Shock Troops or Skirmisher Troops. I might go for Clan Warrior at the moment because they work well with the archers. Let's check this. Is there anything that we need? I don't think there is. Oh, we've got some leather. We can sell that. And we have definitely helped with our money worries. Which is good. We also gained a level. So I'd like to get one skill point in most things apart from weapons. I'm going to put one in trade. Because that will eventually help us with our money problems. And I think I better end it there. So yeah, that's broadly how it works haven't got into tactics too much. To some extent, I'm probably going to be learning them as I go myself. So basically, we've just covered telling people to charge, telling people to engage, I think. So your archers, you would normally have engage rather than charge. But sometimes you don't want to move at all. That last battle, I told the archers where to stand, and they just stayed there, and they did automatically fire on anyone within range. So... You don't necessarily need to tell people to charge. We will start trying to get a bit more in depth into what you can do. But the one basic tactic we have used this time is to have the archers standing higher on a hill than the infantry. Because if you're all on a level, the infantry just get in the way. Because if the archers are on a hill, they can fire down at the enemy. They'll probably have a better range because of it. And the infantry can just sort of make a shield wall. Which will be better now that we've got some who actually have shields. But yeah, so we will see how we can develop it. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.